This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. From MPB Think Radio, this is Now You're Talking. It's a show about the most interesting people and stories of Mississippi. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey. I am editor-at-large and cartoonist with Mississippi Today. Our next guest, well, she needs no introduction. Just say Miss Mississippi 2022, and the name Emmy Perkins should ring a bell or two. By using the healing power of music to make a change in the world around her, Emmy has successfully taken her Music is Medicine platform to new heights. With her historic win as the first Mississippi to receive the competition's Social Impact Award this past December. A proud student at Mississippi State University and a native of Hattiesburg, she's here today to discuss her passion for educating children through music, growing up in Mississippi, and of course, what the future holds for her as a musician, mentor, and motivator. So I'd like to welcome to the show Miss Mississippi 2022 Emmy Perkins. Emmy, um, by the way, it's so good to be able to talk to you. I had the honor of meeting you what was a little bit over a week ago, I guess, in Hattiesburg. Yeah, yeah, so it's good to talk to you again. Thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me, and it's, it's an extreme honor to be here today and to talk with you. One of my, I'm one of your biggest fans, so this is amazing for me. Well, I definitely, after hearing you sing, um, I am now one of your new fans. Of course, I was a fan Aww. before when you came <laughs> in. I'm incredibly talented, and one of your former teachers, Tony Keeler, uh, reached out to me and said just that you were talented from the moment that he first met you and and Aww. that you've been, I mean, just all throughout school and so forth. And one of the things that amazes me about you in the Miss Mississippi pageant and pageants in general is that you didn't ever really enter a pageant until you were in college, did you? Not at all. Pageants were definitely not in my vocabulary. And I honestly initially got involved because I knew that there was scholarship money involved and I knew that I could pay for my education that way without taking out student loans. And so here I stand three years later as Miss Mississippi. It was a total shock to me that I won Miss Mississippi, but then also with $30,000 in scholarships from the organization, which is such a testament in itself. Yeah, and add that on top of your academic scholarships. Your parents have big smiles on their faces. Oh, my dad literally cheered when he found out that's how much money I had earned. He was like, we can all close our pocketbooks. <laughs> I know. When my son called me and said he got a 33 on ACT, I just got down on the floor and wept. I got in the fetal position and cried. I was so happy. Oh, yeah. It's every pink dream, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, but you know, it's, it's so funny that you mentioned that because it, it's hard to believe this, but it, how many years it's been now. But when Conversations, the television show with Mississippi Public Broadcasting, I interviewed Hannah Roberts, uh, Robbie Robertson, who's 1966 Mississippi, Glenda Grubbs, who's from Hattiesburg also, 1972, Tara Foshi Ward from 2006, and uh, Lena Brinza, who from 1993. So I had that many Mississippians and Miss Mississippis in the room together talking about their experience, and they were all like, yeah, that's how I got through college. Yeah, that's how I'm going through medical school. So it's, it really is honestly just such a huge opportunity. It truly is, and it's something that I'm very thankful for. But then it's also, on top of that, a priceless opportunity to be a mentor, to be somebody who represents what it means to be a dreamer and to achieve your dreams. And that's seriously the heart of what I do as Miss Mississippi. It's kind of my mission statement. It's to make everybody feel like a somebody, but then also inspire them that no matter their circumstance, they can become anything they want to be. Yeah, definitely. And that's such an important message in Mississippi. And, you know, that's one of the things and I've kind of done, you've done it in a very compressed amount of time. I and mean, we're going to talk about that, your travels, because I think it's amazing all the places you've gotten to see and the people you've mm-hmm. met. But I mean, I've always believed that the, the kids in Mississippi are some of the most talented per capita in the United States, but sometimes they don't believe they can do great things. And that's what you're doing. And I love your platform. The Music is Medicine is is such a fantastic uh, idea. How did you come up with that? Well, it's honestly astounding for me to hear somebody say, you know, Music is Medicine is, medicine is incredible because it started from absolutely nothing. It started with a spark of an idea that I had in college, my freshman year of college. But I kind of go beyond that. Let me start from the beginning of my life growing up. In the fourth grade, I discovered my love for the arts and music after trying to do every single hobby in the book growing up. Soccer didn't work out. So many different things that I tried to do didn't work out. But when I opened my mouth to sing for the first time, 
I ran with that hobby and I ran with that passion as if it were a part of me. And so all growing up, I was immersed in the arts from that point on. I was in local community theater. I did drama classes. I did show choir throughout high school with Tony Keeler, like you mentioned. And so when I got to college, I knew music still had to be a part of my story. So I minored in music at Mississippi State University. And I was pre-med at the time, how most freshmen start out their experience. But I was studying pre-med and also studying these music theory classes all in one. And I started to put the pieces together that people could be impacted in a positive way with the power of music. So often doctors prescribe medicine and they send people to different sessions. But music can be the thing that can be priceless yet costless when it comes to impacting people across the nation. And so I put two and two together, and Music as Medicine was born. And so I started visiting local nursing homes with a program called Memories with Maracas, where I took plastic maracas in old-time hits like Elvis, and we would do maraca exercises, get the residents moving, and they would remember things from their past. And so from there, Music as Medicine expanded and became something that benefited children as well. And then most recently, I have supported an organization called Musicians on Call that takes music to the bedside of patients across the nation as well. So that's kind of a huge spill and an overview about what Music is Medicine is and how it started. But it truly has been a culmination of so many things in my life coming together at the perfect moment that I could impact people. We're talking Miss Mississippi 2022, Emmy Perkins. Emmy, you know, I love that. You just said, yeah, I opened my mouth one day and I started singing. And it, I mean, that's... I did that, and they told me to stop. So, oh, I mean, well, my parents were tone deaf, so it came out of nowhere. <laughs> exactly. So it was one of those recessive gene things, right? Uh, yeah, we still don't know where I learned that. I could have been adopted. Who knows? Oh, that, that now, now, now. I, I, I know. <laughs> but, but think, I mean, like I said, so how old were you when you really realized you could sing? I was 12 years old when I realized really? I could sing. A local production audition of Annie the Musical with Hattiesburg Civic Light Opera and yeah. I made it to the second round of auditions, and the second round was in front of parents, friends, family members, and I opened my mouth to sing, and everybody turned to my mom and said, well, where did this come from? And that was the first time she said, I don't know. She could be adopted. Who knows? This is so out of nowhere. That's that's amazing. I mean, you really do. I mean, you've got to be a voice, and you sang your signature yeah. song in Hattiesburg when you were there, and you did acapella. There was no music, and I was like, yeah. that was incredible. I mean, did okay. So you did that in front of a crowd there, but when you're standing on a stage in front of thousands of people or hundreds of people or however many people are in the room, do you ever just like totally get stage fright and nervous or at this point are you just a professional and it's not a not a huge issue? Well, it's kind of funny because I would rather sing on a stage with lights shining in my face where the people just look like little ants yeah. than sing in front of a room full of 100 people. So I always get nervous and everybody always says getting nervous is the perfect reminder that you care about what you're doing. And so I usually use that nervous energy to channel into something even greater so that my performance ends up being something that impacts somebody. Well, I mean, obviously your music is medicine is impacting people. And and congratulations, by the way, you won the Miss America Social Impact Award. Um, That was huge. Number one, it was a nice scholarship, which is always handy. But two, I mean, what a huge honor. It was such an honor to win that scholarship and honestly looking back from the creation of music as medicine officially in 2019 to where I am today I could have never imagined this to be a part of my life as much as it is I couldn't even imagine the fact that I'm standing here as Miss Mississippi any in 2019 would have never guessed that all of this would be a part of her future how do you handle Obviously, you're a student, and college, being a college student is a full-time job in its own right, but you're yes, also yes. very busy with what you're doing. How do you juggle the two? Are you putting college on pause, or how, how does that work? So this year, I've actually put college on hold, and so my best friends are all at Mississippi State University living out their senior year of college, and I'm working full-time as Miss Mississippi, which has honestly been a big challenge for me that I didn't expect out of the situation. But like my mom and dad reminded me, how many young women can say they have the opportunity to be Miss Mississippi? 
But I think that also goes to show that being Miss Mississippi or being a public figure doesn't come without its hardships. It doesn't come without its adversities. And so being a college student and being kind of pulled away from that world and into a full-time job that is very glamorous but also a lot of work was a huge adjustment for my life. And I'm excited to return back to Mississippi State in the fall and finish my degree and then see what's next for my life. Yeah, I have got to know a fellow um, Hattiesburg Hattiesburger? Is that how you say that? Or oh, yeah. yeah. Term. Yeah, I um Jane Jane Granberry. You know, she yeah, I yeah. love her. Yeah, she was um Miss Miss Hospitality, Mississippi Hospitality. And you know, she just she's like this is the planner I use and like every minute of her day was like boom 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 boom. And that's kind of the way you've got to feel too. You're you're on the road, you're traveling, you're doing a lot of things, aren't you? Yes, yes. I've definitely mastered the art of what to order at the fast food restaurant. It's kind of become a game. Every single time I pass a fast food restaurant in a Mississippi town and I'm hungry, I'm like, wonder what I'm going to get at this restaurant that I've never been to. Or, you know, McDonald's is a typical one you pass in Mississippi. So that's another place that I've learned to order at, too. So it's very funny. There are a lot of small things that you learn as you travel full time about the way that your life can change in just an instant and how you can adapt in those circumstances. What are some of the stories from the road and some of the places and some of the people that have really jumped out? to you in the last, and you're halfway through your reign. It's hard to believe it's going by so quickly. Oh, yeah. So I've driven over, I think, 37,000 miles. Wow. I've impacted over 6,000 students as of today. And I'm coming off of a school visit right now and finishing my day up with all of that, visiting the different counties. But I think that the stories are what drive me to do what I do. I have people come up to me in the counties and say, these students have never even left the county that they're in in Mississippi. And so the reason that I do what I do is because I know that a future Miss America or Miss Mississippi could be sitting in one of these rural counties, could be sitting anywhere in Mississippi, and if they don't have a reminder and a figure in their life that inspires them to dream, they won't know it's possible for them. And, you know, it's very eye-opening to travel across the state of Mississippi because, as you know, It's very poverty-stricken. It's very hard to see certain situations that children go through in our state. And I recall a particular time that I was at a school system, and a little boy looked at me at the end of our program that we did with Music as Medicine, and he said, this has been the best day of my life. And I told his teacher that that definitely couldn't be true. It had to be Christmas or some other holiday or birthday. And his teacher said, no, I mean, this is one of the students in Mississippi who goes home with a backpack that we put peanut butter and jelly and bread in on Friday so that he can make it to Monday without being hungry over the weekend. And so when you think about the impact that one person, one Miss Mississippi, one title holder can have in the life of a child, it's astounding. I mean, we've seen a city without clean drinking water. We've seen students that go home hungry, but when they have that out in that glimpse of hope that reminds them that it's possible to defy their circumstances, that's when everything is worth it to me. That's when every hard part of this job is truly just a minuscule thing, when you see the impact that you have on people. I mean, you're a Mississippian. I mean, I, you know, you, and I've been here a long time, too. And you can't really understand Mississippi just driving from home to school or home to your office. I mean, you do have to get out and you get traveled. And I mean, this is going to be an experience that's going to pretty much change probably you and how you see our state yeah. probably for the rest of your life, isn't it? Absolutely. It's definitely given me a newfound appreciation of Mississippi. And I love the William Faulkner quote. I think I commented on your Facebook. But to understand a place, you must understand a place like Mississippi. Or to understand the world, you must understand Mississippi. Mississippi is truly different in every area of the state that you go. And I think that that's so unique to our Mississippi. It's so unique to our state. And it makes me love Mississippi all the more. I think one of my favorite funny memories from recent weeks is I was driving down the road towards Tupelo to visit a school system there, and a man passes me galloping on a horse on the interstate. And I thought, you know what, only in Mississippi could I be headed to an appearance or to a school visit and a horse back rider just gallops by me on the interstate. Yeah, it doesn't, um, you probably don't see that in New York City too. Well, you do, they're probably police officers, but it doesn't happen too often. But 
Um, yeah, exactly. And I mean, like I said, are you keeping a journal or keeping notes just so you can, when you can look back and just say, this is what I've done this year? Yeah, so I've actually been encouraged since the beginning of my reign as Miss Mississippi to keep a notebook or keep a log of what I've done. And as unique as it sounds, I had a conversation with some other candidates at Miss America about the fact that writing for my generation is kind of out and video documentation and, you know, TikTok, social media posts is the new diary. And I looked at things in a new light when I thought about that because I've journaled as much as I possibly can, but sometimes it's hard when you're on the road so much. But then I thought back and said to myself, you know, you have a diary and a video vlog and a post from every single person and time that you have made an appearance across the state of Mississippi. And so it's almost like my virtual diary in a way that I cherish more than anything. Yeah, your goal was to visit a school in all 82 counties. How many counties have you gotten into so far? As of today, I am on county number 22, and at the end of the week, I will be at 25. And then at the end of January, I'll be at about 35. And so I'll do about 14 counties a month until I give up my title in June, and I'll be accomplishing that giant goal of going to all the counties. I would imagine that in you know in June when you're you're about ready to hand over the crown, that's going to be a really relaxed uh, situation compared to what you were doing the previous June. Oh, it's going to be the best relaxing, most relaxing month I've ever had in my life. And I think my business manager Karen Jones, who is responsible for helping me book all these counties, is incredible, and she's going to need a nap too because she has really been integral in getting me into all these counties because it's not easy to fund that trip either across Mississippi. And luckily I have an incredible partnership with an organization called Volunteer Mississippi that encourages people in the community to volunteer. And as one of their ambassadors, they help fund my trips across the state of Mississippi, which is amazing. Oh, that's great. That's great. I remember talking with Glenda uh, during the TV show, Glenda Grubbs, uh, and she was just saying, yeah, she got a Camaro and she like just went everywhere in that Camaro throughout the whole year. So um, do you end up doing a lot of your driving? Do you have somebody that comes along with you? So one thing about me is I have been a solo traveler for the majority of this year. My parents definitely come when they can, but They've also encouraged me that this is a full-time job, and it's part of the job of being Miss Mississippi is, you know, driving these many miles by yourself and getting the job done, truly, you know, being motivated enough and independent enough to do it. And so that's been very life-altering and life-changing because it feels like my first real big girl job this year, and with all the hours that I've put on in the car and all the miles that I've driven, I've had to learn how to be okay with being by myself. So I've turned to a lot of music and podcasts and different, you know, tips to figure out how to make it from point A to point B without getting too bored. You uh, are at Mississippi State University. Of course, you're studying public relations now. Um, doctor, you had a class with Dr. John Ford, the, the great Love. Dr. John Ford, just an incredible uh, teacher and human being as well. But I would have to think that the last year definitely will probably help you, number one, probably get a job, but number two, train you for whatever you do in the future in PR because you have definitely been doing a great job of it this year. Thank you. Thank you. And PR's focus is about the people. And so I tell people that this is the best internship opportunity that I could ever imagine because I am constantly dealing with people, interviewing, speaking to groups. And it's been so much of a learning experience because it's not always easy to get up in front of a crowd and speak. It's not always easy to conduct an interview or be interviewed. So that's amazing as well. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to be back with Miss Mississippi 2022 Emmy Perkins. So stay tuned. This is Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hey, welcome back. This is Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey of Mississippi Today. And we're back here today with musician, mentor, motivator, and, oh, yes, Miss Mississippi 2022, Emmy Perkins. Emmy, um, thank you. I love hearing a little bit about what you've been doing. You've been going into schools. You've been going to nursing homes and hospitals. You've gotten to meet a ton of people. And, you know, it. I guess it works out pretty well that you get 
the title right after COVID's kind of lifted a little bit. I mean, it's still there, but we're not locked down the way we were. So it gives you a chance to be able to get out and get all across Mississippi. Absolutely, absolutely. I've loved being a full-time worker because I know that it wasn't like that in the past because of COVID. So I'm so thankful that I have the ability to go into schools and hospitals and nursing homes because that was not always the case. Right. Right. No, no. I mean, nursing homes, for, for good reason, were shut down. You know, I mean, the, yeah, the virus yeah. was obviously a big problem with that. But it's good that you're able to do that a little bit. Like you said, you, you had not really done pageants until you were in college. And now, you, of course, you did. And then how did you end up? Of course, I guess you were um, Miss Mississippi State University. That was your title before you were Miss Mississippi. How did you fall into getting into that contest and being Miss Mississippi State University? It all goes back to the scholarships. I realized that if you were to win Miss Mississippi State University, you won a full tuition scholarship for a year to your university. And so really? Okay. Obviously, I raced to sign up for that. I have a long history of Mississippi State loving in my heart because my mom and dad both met at Mississippi State. My dad played under the legendary Ron Polk. So I definitely hold a special place in my heart for Mississippi State and all the things that it's done for my family. My dad kind of came from a poverty-stricken situation, and Mississippi was Mississippi State was his way out. And so for that, my whole family is thankful, and we're so thankful that it's a part of our story in so many ways. Yeah, how did it feel? To, I mean, was that the first real uh, contest that you'd ever won? Actually, I was Miss Hattiesburg the okay. previous year, during the year before COVID, and then obviously it extended on to another year during COVID. And so it was incredible to represent the town that had shaped me into the person that I was. My dad's from Laurel, Mississippi, and my mom's from Starkville. And so we ended up kind of at the middle ground, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And I have loved living in the Hub City, and it's definitely a place of culture, art, musicians, artists, you name it. We have the history and the culture in our city that has made me and the Annie Perkins I am today. And so it was an honor to represent that as well. Okay. So then, you know, by the time you got to Miss Mississippi State University, you were all hand. So it wasn't too nerve wracking, I suppose. But it had to be pretty cool to hear your name because you were thinking, well, cha-ching, I've, I've got my scholarship. Mm -hmm. But number two, you're representing the university that you love. But then it was on to Vicksburg. And then you, of course, competing against everybody else in the state of Mississippi. What was it like? Was there a degree of competition with the other other contestants or did you develop some friendships? How, how did that go? So this is actually, it's cool you asked me this because as someone who's never claimed to be a pageant person, I never expected that being Miss Mississippi would be a dream of mine. And so this summer in Vicksburg, I'd prepared so much and I'd just taken a trip to study abroad in Europe. And so I had this weird sense of peace going into the competition because I had checked a lot of great items off my bucket list. I was going into my senior year of college and I just felt like I could conquer the world. And I felt like I had a sense of peace that only could come from God. And so taking on that week was amazing. And I had a mentor in my life tell me to imagine that I had already won Miss Mississippi going into the week and to see and think to myself, what would I treat people like if I knew what the outcome of this week would be? Wow. So I went through the entire week like that, and it gave me chills just thinking about the way that my attitude and my mind were geared towards you know, the competition that week. But I met an incredible friend named Charity Lockridge. We've been friends for a couple of years now. She competed in Miss Mississippi with me my first time, and then again you know, the second time that I went as Miss Mississippi State. And every night before we competed, we would go to the corner of the room and we would hold hands, kind of like a first runner up and a, you know, the two final people on stage waiting to be called stand in a pageant. And so we'd go over the corner and we'd pray. And at the very, on the very last night, she looked at me and she said, this is going to be you and I on stage. We're going to be holding hands just like we've prayed every single night. And so we get to the final night and sure enough, we are holding each other's hands on stage, waiting to see who becomes Miss Mississippi. And I had this incredible sense of peace wash over me then, too, because I knew that whether it was me or whether it was her, that the state would be in great hands. And so we had a really special bonding moment that was out of body and so extraordinary, honestly. That's really cool. It really is. So when you did hear your name, um, 
I, I, I can't even imagine how that feels. Uh, that just oh had to be pretty it's amazing. A moment, it's a moment I wish I could live and do over and over again. And I compare it to me being in the fifth grade and playing Peter Pan in the musical Peter Pan and getting to fly on cables. I compared that feeling to the feeling of winning Miss Mississippi. It truly was an off the ground, exciting, undescribable moment that you know not many people get to experience. When you when you're in a pageant, I mean, obviously, you know, Miss Mississippi or Miss America, and you've got to pick a dress. You've got, to, I mean, you've got to figure out your platform, which you already had. I mean, you already had that pretty much worked out. Do you have advisors or how does that work? I mean, when you, because by the time you get to Miss America, I can only imagine how incredibly intense that is. And I mean, that's, that's, that's serious business at that point. Oh, you have a whole team of people that help you get to the point of where you are. And, you know, I've had some incredible mentors, directors, and friends in my life that have helped make me into the person I am that was ready for the job of Miss Mississippi. And even after I've won, I've remembered those circle of people that have been there for me before they ever suspected that I'd become Miss Mississippi because they truly are my team and my people that made me the person that I am and helped me continue to be successful even on the days when being Miss Mississippi isn't easy. Right. So, okay, what is a day like that it isn't easy for you to be Miss Mississippi, just out of curiosity? Yeah, so a lot of people don't really expect this about being Mississippi, but you get a lot of online hate. You get a lot of really? people that put their opinions out there about who you are as a person and how you're running the ship. And so a lot of times it's very hard to be a public figure and be in the spotlight because so many people, you know, don't want you to succeed. And so you have to kind of look beyond that and think about the great things that you are doing because you will always have people that want to to tear you down. That's just the way that life works. That's the way that jealousy works. And so remembering who you are, remembering who your people are, and remembering the great job and the stories of people that are impacted is what truly keeps me grounded. And I'm so lucky to have parents that have weathered any storm that I go through in this year with me and reminded me what my priority was. And that's the people. That is the people that have gotten me here, it's the people that I'm going to impact, it's the people that I already have impacted. So that's always incredible. Well, I mean, I'll tell you the same thing I tell my sons. You know, I said, if you're going to do anything that's worthwhile and stick your head up out of a foxhole, you're going to take some shots. And, Amen. and, and <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, you know, I mean, like I said, I think, you know, you got always got to figure what's going on in their life, and that's how they get their dopamine or whatever. And you just, Absolutely. I mean, I don't even read the comments under my cartoons, so I, I completely understand, you know, what you're talking about that. But I, like I said, I can't imagine hating on a Miss Mississippi, but that's, you know, the world's kind of weird right now. I think, I think every title holder across the nation goes through that, that same experience, including Miss America herself. I think that it's not easy, especially for somebody of that caliber in the spotlight to receive messages and constant criticism because everybody feels like they have their own version of who they want Miss America to be or who they want right. Miss Mississippi. But, you know, the people that are positive about me being Miss Mississippi far outnumber those that have criticism and, and try to defeat someone. They, they, I have a great team of people that are so supportive, that cheer me on, that love to watch me succeed, and I couldn't be more grateful for that. Well, I mean, like I said, you you've already managed to visit about half the counties in the state, and you're you're out there making a difference with your platform, which is a great platform. Like I said, um, you know, sometimes you can kind of like, oh, oh, that's that's kind of a lame platform. But this is not a lame platform. It's it's really good. And hearing you talk about it with passion in front of the business leaders of Hattiesburg was really cool. And, and you did a great job on that. And at the end of the day, like I said, I think you know your why. And you know, the question is, when you do graduate. Um, where do you expect to be? Where do you, where do you see yourself in five years? That is a million dollar question. Oh, so you want a million dollars in five years? I don't blame you. I don't. You know, I'd like it too. It'd be great. I love it. Well, you know, there there's a lot of things in life that you can make plans for. And when I became Miss Mississippi, I realized that I could make a plan to be a doctor or a lawyer. And five years from now, that could totally be flipped upside down. So I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm excited to see what happens. My dream job would be a backup singer <laughs> or 
to be the CEO of Music is Medicine as a franchise and an operated corporation that takes music therapy across the country. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm going to end up exactly where I need to be five, ten years from now. And I know that Mississippi is going to be a big part of my story, no matter where I end up or what I do. And it'll always hold a special place in my heart for being the place that made me who I am. Oh, it sounds like, too, you've got great parents, so it'll always be home, too. Oh, yeah, always, always. So a little bit. Let's talk about, like I said, um, you know, you are a student at Mississippi State University. You have not been on you, – you've been busy. You've been on the road and yes. so forth. How weird is that to be able to come back? You know, you're going to come back. You've got to finish out. You've got another another year. Have you got two semesters left? Yes. It, it's a, or one semester. One semester. Actually. Okay. Well, that's not Six too bad. Credits. Yeah. Six credits left. So it'll be super easy to go back and get plugged back in on my campus and my community in Starkville. I was a tour guide at Mississippi State before I won Miss Mississippi. So – I am excited to return back to giving tours of campus at Mississippi State. So if anybody needs a tour next fall, I'll be going from Miss Mississippi to official tour guide. That'll be my job for six more months. I was going to ask, do they let you keep the crown or do you have to give that back? Oh, I definitely get to keep all of that. But What? You know, but you can't, you just, that, you won't be able to wear it after that point. You just can't keep wearing yeah. it until you're, you know, 70 years old. Yeah, you keep at seventy years old. I think I probably will wear it. Just I, I think you should. <laughs> yeah, seventy year old goals at that point. That would be very yeah. cool. Which is amazing. You, you're not. I mean, you're in the honors college. You, you like I said, you got academic creds as well as on top of uh, you know being Miss Mississippi as well. And what classes do you think have prepared you for this moment as much as anything that you've taken at school? Um, I think a lot of my pre med classes that I'm not even going to end up using in my life has prepared me for this moment. But really? then also, yeah, yeah, just the just the hard work that it took to get through them helped me be prepared for this moment. And then obviously my public speaking classes, my public relations classes that I was in with Dr. Ford, or even the classes that I took on digital designing and software design has helped me with social media. I've been able to increase Miss Mississippi's social media by 150% wow. during my year job, the engagement and the following, just because I've been able to make authentic content that I feel like people really relate to. And so that's been something super special that I feel like I can attribute to my major at Mississippi State. Yeah, I followed you um, after I met you. I, I followed you on Instagram and you do you do a great job. You really do. Oh, thank, uh, you. thank you. So that that's a lot of fun. It's fun to keep up with you and where all you're headed and all, all the different cool stuff you've going to see. And like I said, you you never know um, what kid you're going to be able to to make a difference in their lives and so forth. Like I said, I mean, you you've got to be having a lot of fun. Absolutely, and honestly, I know that this is kind of going in a different direction than talking about college and Miss Mississippi, but I wanted to share it with you because it's kind sure. of the basis of who I am, and it's a motivator behind a lot of what I do. My family immigrated from Jazeen, Lebanon, on my dad's side of the family to Mississippi. And so a lot of the love that I hold in my heart for the state of Mississippi is for the people who got the opportunity to come here with the American dream. My great-grandfather, his name was Moni Ram, he opened a convenience store in Laurel, Mississippi um, back in the day. And so it was during the Great Depression that he opened a store, and the people in the Laurel community would come shop for groceries, and they couldn't afford their groceries, so he would let them go with a little IOU slip that he put in a box with their name on it. And so after the Depression ended and they would come back to pay him, he took the slips out of the box and he ripped them up into little pieces. And he said, you know, you've given me the American dream here in Mississippi, so let me give you this favor back as a token of my appreciation for accepting me and my family here and accepting the dream that we had for our kids and for our futures. And so as I travel Mississippi, I hold that amazing story of my family in my heart as I meet each person because I realize each person in Mississippi is different. Each person comes with their unique stories. And I've really been able to embrace the fact that people are longing for you to connect with them and hear their stories. And so that's definitely a motivator behind why I do what I do in Mississippi and the Mississippi that I see when I do travel is a melting pot. And that's a testament to my family. That's a testament to what Mississippi is in general. 
Isn't it amazing? I mean, seriously, how different the different parts of the state really are, but in a way we're all very much alike. Absolutely. And I think it's the stories of success and hospitality that truly shape us and bring us together and make Mississippi one of the most special places to be. Have you gotten to meet any of the other previous Miss Mississippis? I have. I've met a lot of them, actually. Um, Obviously, Holly Brand, Mary Margaret Hire, Asia Branch, Laura Lee and I were together the other day in Jackson, Mississippi. But one of my favorite Miss Mississippis I've ever met is Cheryl Pruitt. She's Cheryl Salem now. She lives in California. She won Miss America back in her day. But I actually got to interview her on a series that I created called Mississippi Made. And it's where I interview notable Mississippians and, you know, note on the fact that they've changed the world through some of their actions and the things they've done in our great state. And so when I interviewed her, she gave me advice for Miss America. She told me her life story, and it really was such a cool moment before Miss America to get advice from a former Miss Mississippi and Miss America before I hit the Miss America stage. So she was incredible, and I will actually be at a luncheon with a bunch of former Miss Mississippis in February. It'll be me, Linda Lee Mead, who's a former Miss America, that was Miss Mississippi, Cheryl Pruitt, and... Kimberly Morgan Miles. It'll be the five of us together on a panel discussing our lives as Miss Mississippi, and we'll be in Natchez, Mississippi for that event. So meeting former Miss Mississippis is amazing because they can relate to the experiences that you've been through. It's a very small club that understands what truly goes on when you are Miss Mississippi. So what are the things? Can you share with us some of the things that y'all have in common that you that you experience the same or just a few things, a few of the stories that you've yeah. heard? So Cheryl Pruitt actually told me that her best piece of advice for me, Miss America Week, was while everybody else was staying up and trying to talk a lot and, you know, be out and about at Miss America, so the most important thing you can do is sleep. So every single night before I fell asleep, I would remember Cheryl's words of, you know, it's it's a game of stamina. It's a game of making sure you're well-rested enough to make it to the end of the week. And so I really did take in every word she said about keeping the faith and the stamina throughout your Miss America experience so that I could last the entire week. And it's a lot of late nights. We were going to bed around 2 or 3 a.m. just to turn around and wake back up at 5 or 6. So every single hour of sleep we got, every minute of sleep we got was amazing at Miss America because it definitely helped me get through the week. How do you prepare for the questions when they ask you, you know, some obscure question and you're just like going, oh, why did you just ask me that? Oh, yeah, I definitely got a lot of those obscure questions. And I think coming from Mississippi, I probably got even more just because of all the history that we have here in our state. But it's truly just speaking from the heart and then also being very educated on what's going on around you. The best advice I've ever gotten about interviewing is to intertwine personal stories and who you are on the inside into your answers. Mm. So I always like to relate back to myself, regardless of whether I'm talking about a political topic or an achievement that's listed on my resume. I think humans truly remember the stories more than they do the things that define us in terms of accomplishments and, you know, all the great things on paper that look good. I think the stories kind of go beyond that. It's time for us to take our final break, and when we return, we're going to finish our conversation with Emmy Perkins. She is Miss Mississippi 2022. So stay tuned. This is Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back. This is Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey of Mississippi Today, and we've been talking with Miss Mississippi 2022, Emmy Perkins, who's halfway through her reign as Mississippi's Miss Mississippi. What a, I mean, what a great time that you've had so far this year. Um, you're, it's, and it's probably gone by very quickly because you've been very busy. Oh, it's gone by in the blink of an eye. I think I've traveled to nine different states and, you know, 37,000 miles, like I said before, over 6,000 students, over 160 appearances in the first 
six months on the job. And the, I think the record my business manager told me is about 180 for the year. So oh. I'm very, very busy this year, but it's been the ride of a lifetime and it's forever changed me as a person. So I take it, I mean, it's literally what you put into it. I mean, you could, uh, obviously they have a set amount of things they want you to do, yeah. but it sounds like you're like saying, okay, no, we're going to put, as, I'm going to put more into this. I'm going because it sounds like you would really want to get the most out of the experience. It's a thousand percent kind of driven by the girl that's being, that is Miss Mississippi that year. I think the greatest thing about the change that the Miss America organization has made when it comes to its priorities is the ambition it's inspired women to have as they take on their state titles or, you know, the national title as Miss America. And so having a business plan when I entered my year as Miss Mississippi was why I truly believe that I've been able to make so many appearances because people are excited about what I bring to the table. They're excited to have music as medicine brought into their facility. They're excited to learn how they can integrate music therapy into the nursing home or the assisted living facility they direct. So I think that's been a lot of it um, when I talk about all the appearances that I've made and the numbers that I've gotten to climb to when it comes to the appearances. Well, okay, let's back up. Tell me a little bit about a bit. You have to have a business plan going into this. What would be in said business plan? So my business plan is kind of unique, and a lot of people don't really understand the way that I think. Because when I think, I truly think in song lyrics, I think in music. And so when I was creating my business plan for Miss Mississippi and then Miss America, I wanted a business plan that was defined by different songs so that it would be fun for me to accomplish them if I was able to live them out during my year. And so when I talked to the judges at Miss Mississippi, I said, here's a playlist of 10 different songs, and they define X, Y, and Z, and this is what I'm going to get done. And so on my playlist, I have a song called There She Is, um, and I wrote the song, actually. And the song serves as a reminder to people about who the modern day Miss America or Miss title holder represents. I wanted people to see what the new version of Miss America meant and what and who she was. So I wrote, recorded, and published this original song in six weeks with a place in Hattiesburg called Groove House. And so that was a really incredible experience and it was a really cool part of my marketing business plan to have on my resume when I went to Miss America. That is really cool. And I mean, so you, like I said, you wrote it, music, lyrics, everything. Yes, everything. And I, I had a lot of help from uh, my former piano teacher, Amy Nunez, out of Hattiesburg. She's a big musical influence in my life. And so she and I got together, and week after week, we'd sit and brainstorm all the ways that we felt like the Miss America organization had changed and who Miss America was to me. And so when I left my Miss America interview, I closed the entire interview with the lyrics, some of the lyrics from my original song, There She Is, because I felt like that was who I would be as Miss America. And that was kind of the last thing I wanted them to know when I left the room. So I, I would imagine that wowed the judges. I hope so. Well, I obviously it did. I mean, you, you did one well. Asked, one of the judges asked me when I was walking out of the room how she could listen to my original song. That was a really fun experience for me, for somebody else to be interested in my connection to music and storytelling. And that was a really fun way to kind of relate to the judges and make myself more human. So, like I said, you're going to see that this is what I – are you going to do summer session or are you going to go for the fall so you can get one more football season in? Oh, I've got to get one more football season in. I'm a, I'm a Southern girl, so I will be back at Mississippi State in the fall. I might be in the choir again and I'll definitely be a tour guide again. So there's a lot of great things to look forward to. And then I've got to get my master's because I have all these amazing scholarships. Already. See, I was going to ask you, you've got all that leftover scholarship money, so you're going to end up getting your master's. What do you think you're going to get your master's in? I think I want to get my MBA. But before I head back off to college in the fall, I'm working on a possible internship with either Senator Roger Wicker or Cindy Hyde-Smith. I want to go to Washington and see what it's all about and see what the but political buzz is all about because politics have come, become a big part of my life as Miss Mississippi and as somebody who regularly works with people at the state capitol. It's something that I feel like I'd be really interested in on the national level. And so I'm excited to do that as well if it all works out. Now you can talk to Laura Lee on that because I know she spent some time up in D.C. also. Oh, yeah. 
the connections are incredible. And that's how I've possibly landed an internship in Washington is connections through Miss Mississippi. So you just never know where this job could lead you or who you could meet that could change the entire trajectory of your life. Definitely. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, I would imagine winning Miss Mississippi right there was a pretty big trajectory change as well. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I mean, like I said, I, I'm thrilled for you. What You mentioned the 10 songs, and you did all 10 of them. You talked about them in your speech in Hattiesburg, and I won't make you do all 10 right now. But what are a couple others that that are songs that, that mean a lot to you that are kind of – um, kind of your North Star, or they guide you, or they kind of uh, define who you are? Yeah, there are a lot of songs on the playlist that I have written for my music marketing playlist that I feel like describe who I am as Miss Mississippi and what I want to accomplish. You know, my original song being one of them, like I mentioned before. But another one that I think is cool is Jackson 5, ABC, the song mm-hmm. ABC, Jackson 5. There's a lyric in that song that says, your education ain't complete if you don't have the roots of love. It's somewhere along that line talking about if there isn't love in the classroom, your education doesn't really succeed. And so finding these lyrics and words in these songs as I wrote my marketing playlist was a big motivator to me because that's why I wanted to go to all 82 counties. I wanted to bring that love into the school system that some of these kids don't have at home. So that was a really cool one for me. And then I'm a big U2 fan, so there's a song on my marketing business playlist called Your Song Saved My Life by U2. And Bono in the song literally says, I sing your song to survive. And that's what music is to me. It's it's a survival element in my life. It's kind of like breathing or sleeping. I have to have it every single day of my life. And I think that that's what has motivated me to spread it to other people. And so I also think about a story, and I know... Me and you both like stories, but back to a time where I took music to an assisted living facility and I sang my entire program of music as medicine and memories with maracas and we shook maracas, we played Elvis, and at the very end, this elderly man in the back of the room had not interacted whatsoever. He was slumped over, non-responsive, and I ended up playing or singing Ave Maria and he sat up and he started singing in opera. And I asked his nurse about his opera singing because it was beautiful. And she said, he actually has severe dementia. He doesn't remember his family. He doesn't remember his wife. But he remembers his years as a professional opera singer. And so that's what I mean when I say music is a survival mechanism. It's a way to bring happiness and light into somebody's life in such a costless yet priceless way. And music truly does not discriminate in a world that's full of a lot of hate. It doesn't see age, race, socioeconomic background, illness. It just truly does its job for people, and that's why I want to spread the message of music to the people that I come in contact with. All right. Well, we're we're about ready to wrap up here in just a second. Um, How can folks find you, obviously, in social media and so forth, but what's the best way for them to to kind of follow along with your adventures? So on Facebook, it's Miss Mississippi, and on Instagram, it's Miss America MS. So follow along there, and then there's also a link in my web or in my bios in, on both of those social media sites to follow along on my website, my personal website that's emmyperkins.com. I'm actively updating the counties that I visit on that website. So if you want me to come to your county or your school, and I haven't already come to that county, you can go contact me directly through that website, and I'll get you in touch with my business manager to get me set for that county visit at your school. That's really exciting as well. Amy, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. Tell your folks hello, and I'm, I'm proud for them because as a parent, you know, you want your kids to do great things, and so, well, an and you definitely have. It's an honor to speak to you today. So thank you for all you do for Mississippi, for shedding a light on our amazing state, and for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. Oh, well, you know, I've enjoyed it. Thanks for being on. And like I said, you keep doing what you're doing because it's, it's making a difference. And um well, so, and like I said, I hope we have another conversation at another time, but uh, enjoyed today. I can't wait to hear how things go maybe toward June or so when you've, when you've finished up. Maybe we can get you back on and kind of get an update. 
I'm sure I'll have plenty more stories from traveling all the counties in Mississippi. I, I could imagine you will. Just don't hit a deer and you be careful. I want to thank you for listening today. I want to thank our guest, Miss Mississippi 2022, Emmy Perkins, for joining us. And if you'd like to hear the show again or any past episodes, you can listen to our podcast on your favorite podcast app or our MPB Pebble Media app. Now you're talking as a production of MPB Think Radio is produced by Jermaine Flood. Hey, stay tuned for Southern Remedy, Healthy and Fit, and join us next week at 10.